now or to... Oh hey! I'm Easy Rider and welcome to Toku Time. Well, it's that time of the year again, Toku Faithful. Time for some Power Rangers fun! I know last time we went over some of the heroes of the franchise, but now it's time to look at some of the baddies. The most vile, monster-growing, world-destroying, empire-growing, Zordon-stealing, future-changing, earth-polluting, galaxy-flying... Um... Villains. Choices, nothing official, and Super Sentai fanboyism for the most part is left at the door. With all that said, let's get started. Number 10 Emperor Grub. Okay, to be fair, I laughed when I saw this guy at first. I mean, when you're making Skeletor look like Emperor Palpatine, you know you're doing something wrong. I need more diamonds. My morpher on it. Maybe it's because he monologues to himself every episode. We've got to talk to somebody up there. I don't know, maybe it's the gravelly Christian Bale voice. Either way, this villain just comes off silly. But to be fair, his plan to drain the Earth's resources isn't that bad a plan. He's no slouch in battle either. He's proved that with Doggy Kruger various times. Well, that and having one of his horns cut off by Kruger is kind of hard to forget about. Hands! No! There were some good ideas here, but I still have to rate this conqueror of the universe kinda low. Sorry, Grum, but hey, at least you got Piggy to keep you company, right? <gasps> Bring me something to defeat the Power Rangers, or you'll end up a special on your own menu. Oh. Number 9. Kilobyte. Ah, Vengex's most dangerous general. This mechanical marauder is so chauvinistic, conniving, and goddamn is he cool. This is the kind of villain you know is up to something from behind the scenes. And sure enough, he's the one to go, screw you boss, I'm taking over the dome city of Corinth in my own way. Kilobyte also wields the coolest gun in bad guy history. Seriously, he makes Arnold look like a girly man with that thing. Look at how cool that thing is, a laser rifle! I want one! He even pulls the chump move of the year and disarms his own comrades right in the middle of a fight! You're late. The plan has changed. I've come to say goodbye. Where are you going? Nowhere. You're the one who is leaving! <laughs> <laughs> but Kilobyte is still sneaky enough to take the number 9 spot. It sucks because Kilobyte comes in when the show's more than halfway done. I would have liked to have seen a lot more of this general. And he's supposed to be Vengex's most badass general. As I've always said, you put a human against the machine, the machine will win every time. Then check out this machine! That's what I thought. Number 8. Diabolico. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Why him? Why not Olympias or Queen Banshira? Very simple, really. Diabolico was a real leader. He knew how to plan, he brainwashed Captain Mitchell's son to fight alongside him as the Titanium Ranger, and he even cursed him when he eventually turned good. And now you must face the consequences. You'll pay for your insolence. my permanent gift to you. A tattoo? Even after he was destroyed by the Rangers, the underling still decided to serve him and not Olympias. Surprised? I will say this for Vipra. At least she knows who the better villain is. She still can't act to save her life, though. 
In the end, Diabolico actually helped seal away Banchira once and for all. Kinda wished he had done that sooner, but either way, Diabolico is still an evil mastermind and more than worthy to be on this countdown. This is far from over. What are you gonna do about it? What I should have done long ago. Destroy you myself. Number 7. Mesagog. This was actually a tough call for me. Originally I was going to put Zeltrax here, but the more I researched Mesagog's character, the more I grew to like him a little more. Sure he looks ridiculous and his monotone voice was anything but scary. Something about his struggle with good and evil really stuck out, especially given Anton Mercer's past with Tommy. It screams Batman and Two-Face levels of tragedy. I need more competition. This is too easy. I wipe the floor with them every time. Yeah. I see that. Look, son. This change that's happened in you. I don't like it. This white dino gem's making me stronger every day. Soon no one's gonna be able to stop me, Dad. Isn't that what you wanted? No, that's not what I wanted. That's what Mezagog wants. Look, we share the same mind, but... I hate what he's done to you. But you are Mezagog. Not by choice. Also, rebuilding Tommy's dead friend Terrence into Zeltrax was a stroke of genius plot-wise. It's like salt in the wounds for our hero. Mesagod. Good story, silly looking, but hey, that's Power Rangers. Let this be a lesson. I do not take defeat lightly. Number six. Korak. Aw, hell yeah. For those of you who saw my Magi Ranger review, you know how much I love its Sentai counterpart, Woolzard. But seriously, there's no way you can adapt Woolzard and make him cool, especially in a Power Rangers series. I am Korag, the Night Wolf. Ute, Bijor, Catastros! Right up from your death. So much for reasoning. Power of the Sentai. Holy crap. That is how you adapt a Sentai villain. Seriously, Korag steals the show. He's got better Zords, better story, and that voice, so epic. <laughs> I'm back. It's Korag, right. Uh, we can take him. <laughs> you can try. But you are no match. I call on my sword from the darkness. This is your end. Okay, now what? Like his Sentai counterpart, Korag did turn good in the end, but Lee and Bo's problems didn't end there. Having to fight another Korag. His own son, no less. <laughs> Master's dark magic has given me more power than I ever dreamed. I can't believe you gave it up! Bowen, you have to fight this. I'm here to fight you! The mystic force will fall by my sword, starting with the mighty Liam Bow. So yeah, Mystic Force actually did something better than Magi Ranger. It was only one episode, one episode, and sadly it didn't go anywhere after that. Be cool if it had, but it didn't. Adapting a good Sentai villain is not an easy thing to do, so I gotta give Disney credit for making Korag a super badass villain for the number six spot. I will spare all of you so that you witness firsthand the terror and destruction that unfolds on your land. Remember this day, you will wish it was your last. Number five. Zenaku. Speaking of wolves, you'll never find a more menacing one than this Dugorg. Resurrected by General Nazor, Zenaku made quick work of the Wild Force Rangers, owning them every chance he got. He even managed
managed to steal their own swords, and with his dark swords, he was a force to be reckoned with. Predator way. Fire. No morphs allowed. Even when the Rangers were able to free the warrior Merrick from the cursed mask, Zenaku returned to terrorize them one more time. Seriously, he does not know the meaning of the word dead. He keeps coming back. Who do you think you are, Frieza? In the end, it seems Zenaku was ready to redeem himself as he ventured into the unknown with Merrick. But it's unclear if he turns good or not. Where are you going? I go wherever the wind takes me. You could use some company. My path is to walk alone. I still have much to atone for. You and I have a lot in common. You're not the only lone wolf looking for redemption. Follow me if you must. I won't stop you. Well then, lead the way. As it may, Zenaku's reign of terror will not be forgotten anytime soon. Number 4 Trakina. Now we're getting into the heavy hitters. At first, Trakina just comes off as your typical spoiled princess type, kind of like an alien Paris Hilton. The time has come for you to enter the cocoon. The cocoon? What for? so that you may shed your mortal beauty and become an insect with magnificent powers like me. Oh, thank you, my dear sweet father. But I like my mortal beauty. I don't want to become a bug. But she wasn't quite ready to take over the family business. At least not until she met a warrior named Villamax who trained her to become a lean, mean killing machine. Eventually, Scorpius was destroyed by the Rangers, and Trakina laid claim to the throne. And that's when the terror really began for Terra Venture. Trakina destroyed the defenseless space colony with her new army. They're sitting ducks. We'll blast them right out of the sky. One by one. In a last-ditch effort to stop the Rangers, Trakina became a green Brendel fly with boobs. Okay. What's it gonna be? This! Butter! And yet, somehow she survives all that. I really don't want to get into what happens after that. Move on. Trakina, from princess to badass warrior to evil colony smashing bug queen. But again, only in Power Rangers. Number three, Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa. Aw oh, yeah, the two most infamous villains of all time in Power Rangers history. It all started with Rita, as most of you know. Her constant attacks on Earth led to nothing but her getting headaches. Until Lord Zed came in and started to really give the Rangers a run for their power coins. He thrashed their swords, destroyed the Green Ranger powers for good, and he was just plain creepy. No, seriously, parents called in and complained about how scary Lord Zed was. But isn't he supposed to be scary? I mean, he is the bad guy. But when Rita literally worked her magic on Zed, the two became the Bonnie and Clyde of Power Rangers. A match made in hell. Alone they couldn't do much, but together they really started to wreak havoc on the Rangers. Excellent work, Rito! Oh no, Lord Zed! Funny, you all look much smaller than I remember. Oh, Rita! Ah! Let's get on with it, shall we? I couldn't agree with you more, my dear. Yeah. 
Like golden dust floating in the wind, so shall your planet Earth perish! <laughs> the time has come, Power Rangers, for you to prepare for the end of your world! Ha <laughs> ha! Hell, that's nothing. Look what they did to the Machine Empire. After all. <laughs> I'll bet young Sprocket really gets a bang out of his present. <laughs> We're back. So you get two evil conquerors for the price of one. Rita and Zed. How they didn't get their own spin-off sitcom, we'll never know. Excuse me, a moment. I'll be right back. Sweetheart, that wasn't quite the reaction I expected. Number two, Rancic. Come on, you knew I had to put Crime Boss Numero Uno on here. Rancic is by far the most villainous mutant in time and space. Seriously, he makes Magneto look like chump change. The story begins with Rancic being thrown out of the perfect. Well, let him tell you, it's creepier that way. And as the world above dreamed of perfect DNA, their nightmare, a mutant, was born. So what else was a mutant who could make swords out of his own bones supposed to do in the year 3000? Become a crime lord. But when Time Force spoils his fun, Rancic is ready for them and goes back in time to take over the world a millennium in advance. Now I could sit here all day and fire off reasons why Rancic is such a great Power Rangers villain, but I think everyone knows the one reason he's here, the reason he's on this list, and the reason he's such a great villain. I don't need no gun! I gotta kill you now! That's right, Rancic is played by none other than Bennett himself, Vernon Effing Wells. Eventually, Rancic decided to turn himself in and reform after poning all the Rangers. That really speaks to his character since he was always the outcast and destroying humans had become his goal. Well, Rancic may have turned over a new leaf, but I think we can do one better. And the number one Power Rangers villain of all time, Astronema. I'm sure this comes as a shock to no one. Despite her hair changing color every other episode, she was pretty damn fierce. The black clothing, the icy glare, the dark demeanor. The woman was evil incarnate. Eventually we find out about who she really is. She was actually Andros' long lost sister, Corone, raised to be evil and twisted. Now wait, I know what you're telling yourself. Self? Yeah, that's so played out and cliche, we've seen it a hundred times already in anime, video games, toku, what have you. But at the time, not so much in Power Rangers. Think about it. This was the first time a big bad villain was emotionally linked to one of the Rangers, namely Andros. So that made fighting her all the more hard to do since, well, she was family. The closer they tried to turn her good, the higher the stakes became, and eventually she was literally wired to be evil. Goodbye, brother! For all those reasons and more, Astronema is the number one villain of Power Rangers. Why is it always the pretty ones who turn out to be homicidal maniacs? And well, there you have it, my top ten villains of Power Rangers. Well, with all these fierce, dark warriors come and gone with world domination in their mind, I can only wonder, what's the next big evil up to? What's he planning? 
I guess you aren't as vicious as we thought. Ugh, the Rangers had help. Had help? Yeah, some half human. Decker? What? Decker's helping the Rangers now. What a headache. Saban, listen up and listen good. It's not funny anymore. So please, get with the program and make Power Rangers what it used to be. Watchable. Oh, and I heard you're adapting this next. Don't screw it up. Well, until the next Toku time, I'm Easy Rider. Later. I can help it.